The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broadway, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We start with our usual look at the DAX index. As you can see, it's been in a slight downtrend. Uh, we stopped at a 61% retracement earlier today up there. But uh, the real news, of course, is the market is screaming ahead, you know, with the NASDAQ going uh, to the upside. Now, folks, I wanted to, to differentiate the NASDAQ between the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100 are all technical stocks. There's no financial stocks in there at all. And 30% of that index is lined up with uh, five stocks. Apple being, of course, number one. We have Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Facebook. That's 30% of that index because it is a cap-weighted index, and that's why when you get these high capital stocks like Apple and Amazon, it can move those indexes uh, quite a bit. The Dow Jones, of course, being 30 stocks, and those are price-weighted, so the heavily priced stocks in the Dow will move the Dow very, very easily. You know, you're looking at Boeing, uh, United Healthcare. Uh, well, Goldman Sachs used to be, well, Goldman Sachs is still, I think, the third highest price stock in the in the index, but it is still uh, in a downtrend, and, 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 and very much so. The banking index has been, you know, extremely weak. If we look here at Goldman Sachs, uh, you can see here that this is uh, this stock has been in a, a pretty strong downtrend uh, ever since, uh, you know, March uh, the 5th when it made its high. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that as we look at that going through today. Now, uh, one of our listeners asked me how I got interested, you know, in uh, – in gambling, and I'm really not interested in gambling. I, I, my grandmother, my when I during World War II, I lived with my grandmother uh, during uh, 43, 44, and 45 because my father was in the in the army, and and uh, my mother was making airplanes in St. Louis, um, Missouri, and uh, so I lived with her, and she taught me, you know, basically how to count, and she used the 52 cards of the deck. You know, and she based it, you know, on uh, religion because, you know, you have uh, on the deck, I don't know if you know this, but each spot, like on the ace has one spot, the deuce has two spots, the three has three spots. Well, there's 365 spots on all the core cards in the deck, and there's 52, uh, you know, cards in the deck, which is the number of uh, weeks in a year. 365 is the number of days in a year. You know, the, the, the four is the Matthew, Mark. Luke and John, you know, number six is the days that uh, God took to create the word, uh, earth. Seven is the day that he rested. Eight are the commandments that uh, Noah brought down to the Italians way back years ago. So those are the things that I worked on. Then when I got to um, Indiana, I, I was uh, working on probability theory because it was really a way of, uh, you know, understanding what was happening to the markets because Dr. Knoblet Folks focused everything on that statistics class on how things were working in the market, like the number of days up and, you know, all just just so many things that were there. And so uh, what what I did was we worked on the Poisson distribution in gambling. In other words, it's the theory of runs, how many times, you know, uh, you throw a dice, how many times it'll come up a seven and that type of thing. And I did a, a research paper on that. And that's what got me through my uh, my MBA program. And uh, the, it was really very, very interesting. But that's and that's why I got I was interested in poker because my grandmother taught me how to play poker. And poker is not a game of chance because you have the odds in your favor because you decide when you want to play. It's not like a regular gambling event that starts with the blow of the whistle, the turn of the cards, the toss of the ball. You know, uh, so that has nothing to do with it. And so when you, there's three aspects of poker, first of all, it's a, the two cards that you start out with in Texas Hold'em. And then your position, you know, where are you in relation to the betting, which is a huge edge, because if you're last in the betting, you have a tremendous advantage. If you're first, you have a big disadvantage. So when you add all of these up, you have 
to deal in certain probabilities. And you only want to play when the probabilities are heavily in your favor. Otherwise, you will be gambling, and you don't want to do that uh, because you know gambling is not what you want. You want to be a speculator, and the word speculare comes from the Latin word, uh, speculare, the Latin word, which means to observe. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do when we observe these patterns that we look at, uh, that we see all the time, and they're they're just about everywhere. We're seeing so many of these patterns coming to uh, conclusion now, and especially these NASDAQ stocks like Microsoft and Google and, oh my goodness, every Amazon, they're all, they're all making what we think are topping patterns. Just to give you an example here uh, of looking at uh, Microsoft here, and it's going to be up again today because of the uh, news announcement they're buying something else but uh the 1.618 expansion on that comes in at 108 uh, one, excuse me 101 uh 10132 so we'll but there there's just a lot of them there the difference is we have a bifurcated market folks because you know you have the Nasdaq that is going crazy but you're doing about what 40 or 50 stocks there the S&P's up and there's about 80 stocks the Dow Jones is up and that's about 15 of the 30 stocks. So if you look at the New York Stock Exchange Index, and I'm going to just give you an example of what it looks like compared to all of these, and I think this is what is really trying to tell a story here, is you can see the NASDAQ is certainly, you know, uh, way up there. You can see what's happening. It's making it actually a double top up there. Uh, the the S&P is making a 61 percent, I believe, no, 78 percent retracement up there around 27, 47, somewhere in that ballpark. But look at the look at the actual stock market, the New York Stock Exchange, which is the broadest index that we have. That's just barely making a 61 percent retracement from the May high. So there's a lot of differences in the market here. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know, but it's something that we should pay attention to because we had the same type of situation in 2000 when we had the dot-com bubble. But we'll see whether this is going to be a um, some type of a major top. Now, we have Bill Meridian as our guest today, and he is calling for a T-O-P in the M-A-R-K-E-T today. So that's putting his old uh, nickel on the line, I think. So we'll have to listen to what Bill has to tell us today and see what's going on. Uh, we had this tremendous move in bonds over these past few weeks. Uh, mo mainly, I believe it was short covering because, as I mentioned, you know, the open interest had been dropping. And all we did, you know, in the, uh, the market as far as uh, moving uh, up is, you know, we just made some major retracement levels is all we really did in a bear market as near as I can tell. So we'll, we'll watch these as we unfold. But today will be a very critical day you know, to really watch what is uh, what what watch what is going on, as they say. All right, that's mainly the main thing that we wanted to discuss this morning was the differentiation between the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones, and of course the um, the S and P stocks. Because in the stock market, you can control that thing with not very many stocks, and with the with the right amount of money placed, uh, you're you can really move that market. In foreign exchange, it's a whole different story because you really can't. Uh, move the markets that much because you're dealing in cash. The silver is still acting okay, Mike. I believe if we can get gold above 1315, you'll be able to see uh, to see what's going on. I've been asked to t talk a little bit about the uh, treasury bonds, and I'll, I'll do that in just a minute, and we'll, we'll see what we have. Hold on here, folks. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Annie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the Treasury bond market, and I've put up the chart of the September T-bonds. That's the one that's uh, going to be the lead contract right now. And as you can see here, that we have a formation of an ABCD pattern coming in at a 382 retracement of the recent low before we had the huge move up. Now, I believe we're going to get down to that 143 level in these bonds, and then we'll probably have a little bit of a rally. That's the way I'm looking at it. If we look at this market in relation to what, and I'm going to show you the relationship between the, uh, this is the German bond that we're looking on here. That's basically the same thing in Germany that we're looking at here. You notice all we did was make a retracement in those German bonds. You'll notice that there was one, uh, you know, way back in September that made a 61% retracement, and now we've made another one at the 78% retracement. But if you'll look at all of these rallies from the past year, all of them have been almost exactly equal. And we're seeing the same thing, this type of equality in the bonds. So I believe that, that, you know, this is a topping pattern here in these Treasury bonds and Treasury notes. A very, very oversold market has rallied, and it, we rallied lead six handles from 40, 141 to 147 in the uh, Treasury, uh, almost, yeah, 147 in the uh, Treasury bond. So that takes care of the oversold. Now we're uh, overbought. So we'll watch the pattern. But the key one for today is to watch that 143 level. Uh, that's the uh, that's the ABCD pattern at the 382. Of course, if it goes through that, you know, by more than 10 or 15 pips, then you're looking at, you know, potential that this top has already been formed. But I'm not sure if that's the case or not. And that's uh, usually what you're doing here when you're trading in probabilities. You are you don't know for sure what's going to happen ever. I mean, ever, 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 ever. So you got to pay a, a close attention to these things as we're as we're looking at them. So that's the main thing that I'm watching. Now, we also had an uh, indication to talk a little bit about the silver and uh, I believe silver and gold are really trying to move here to the upside, folks. If we take a look at silver, 
You'll notice that last week we completed that really nice one, three, five higher bottoms pattern that was given to me by um, uh, Roy Longstreet. You'll you'll see that the first uh, three the three point was a 78 percent retracement. The five point was a 61 percent retracement. We've held that. All we really need to do to get this moving is to get that silver above the 1680 level. And uh, this thing could have some pretty good legs. Legs. The corresponding number in the gold would be at around 1322. And I think if we get above 1322, then we could start to salt those old highs at around the 1365 level. But there's still that outstanding probability that gold could go down one more time, you know, to do a big final washout. Uh, that would take silver down to around 1510. You know, that's a little more than a buck and a half from where we are right now. So I don't know if it's going to do that or not. It looks like it's making a major cycle bottom in here. But as I say, you you don't really know for sure. The gold really needs to get started to prove that that cycle bottom is in. It hasn't done that as of yet. All these rallies have been 11, 12 bucks, you know, 17 at the most. So that's really not telling you very much at all as far as what you want to be seeing when you're when you're looking at uh as some of these uh, things unfold, that's the that's the real key. Um, the, someone's asked a question about the emotionalism in the market, folks. The emotionalism in the market is all in the Nasdaq. There's not much emotionalism in the other stuff. You know, it's being carried along, I believe. But it, frankly, uh, that's where the real action is. It's almost one of those. Please let me in. In fact, last week, every day last week, with the exception of Friday. Um, you know, we were spot on uh, with open interest dropping every day, which is, uh, no, you know, hold on. I'm just chatting with uh, Bill Meridian. He's coming on and uh, we'll be fine here. He'll be on in just a few minutes. But that that's really what we were looking at in the NASDAQ is the open interest was dropping. Now, when we when we approach those new highs uh, on Friday, the open interest did increase uh, in the NASDAQ, but the open interest in the S&P dropped, the open interest in the uh, Russell 2000 dropped, the open interest in the uh, NASDAQ, or the um, S&P NASDAQ, and Dow Jones dropped, all three of the others dropped. Now remember, uh, when, when you're trading these, the S&P has a volume of 3 million share, 3 million uh, is the open interest in the volume, okay? Or the three million is the is the total volume in the S and P, in the Russell, which is the second most popular. It's five hundred thousand, in the Nasdaq it's around two hundred and fifty thousand, and in the Dow Jones it's about one hundred and fifty thousand. So you can see the the lack of liquidity in some of these things and and how it works now. In foreign exchange, you you don't you don't you don't have that problem because you got you know lots of people out there. So these things are relatively thin, thin given the other things that we're looking at. So uh, kind of keep an eye on that. That's important. But one of the indices that I follow uh, and that should be leading the pack if these interest rates are supposed to go uh, lower is is the um, the banking index and the banking index made an ABCD pattern at the exact 61% retracement two weeks ago. And all we're doing now is we're just correcting and over uh, oversold situation. And, you know, that that's really not very much. We saw that in Goldman Sachs. We see it in JP Morgan. We see it in a lot of different things. So to me, this, uh, this move that we're seeing in these indices today uh, are really being carried along by these uh, 50, 60 stocks or 80 stocks that uh, people are really, uh, you know, putting the uh, fire on. But, you know, it could be wrong, wrong a lot, but... Uh, Always a pat, always an opinion, but never in doubt. All right, let's move on to um, one other thing, and that is the bit, the Bitcoin. We want to take a look at that because it's it's held that 78% uh, level relatively well down there at that 7,000. We went tad below 7,000 for just a hair's breadth. We got to 69.90, and then we've had a little bit of a rally from that line. But if we start to go higher then that's when we're going to see the move. Uh, we need a really strong explosive move like uh, 1000 bucks uh, a share in uh, Bitcoin in one day. That would really be an indication that that bottom is in. Similar to what we're trying to see in the silver and in the gold, we need, a, we need really thrust to come out of there to say that a bottom has been made. We're not seeing that. And that's, uh, that's a little troubling, you know, if you want to be on the long side of the, of the gold and silver. 
Uh, we'll, we've only got another minute before Bill comes on, but I wanted to mention about the grains. We'll cover that more tomorrow because we have some sell-off uh, today. The weather's really great across the Midwest. It cooled off a bit. Rain came in. So we're pulling down into some really key support in some of these uh, um, these grains, you know, wheat, corn, and soybeans. We had that triple top up there with that beautiful butterfly pattern in those uh, last week, and they broke substantially like they should have, and now they're pulling back like they should have. So we want to watch these uh, very, very closely to see what happens when they uh, come into a really nice bottoming formation, like uh, maybe Christmas corn around $4 a bushel. We're trading around 407 right now, but you want to watch that one at that level. It'll be pretty interesting to watch because we've got a long way to go in that growing season uh, before we finally get the crops. And we have very little uh, cushion left this year because uh, if something happens, We've had trouble in Brazil, you know, Argentina. Uh, is uh, all of them have been have had some problems. So we'll we'll keep an eye on the wheat the wheat market. And of course, uh, Europe has been hurt very badly. So we need a big crop this year. So it's very important that we get it. But the the weather in May was very hot across the Midwest. So we'll take a break here. We're going to have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research in Austria on the air. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I hope 
we have um, Bill on the air here. We might have some technical problems right now. Oh, I'm and, right here. Uh, hey, there we go. I was hoping you would be. Uh, the first question we get is, are uh, you doing anything with oil futures in Shanghai? Oil futures in Shanghai. Uh, yeah, uh, well, they, they, I, they I track a... the price of oil, but not oil futures sure. in Shanghai. Okay. You sound you have, like you have a cold, Bill. You okay? I'm fine. My sinuses are just a little congested. Okay. Let's start off, and you're you've got the mic, so go right ahead, my friend. Yeah. So you got my. Yes, I'm all ready to go. I'm, I'm already okay. on uh, I'll, number I'd two. I'd just like to give you the just to answer people's questions if they have questions about these. Oh, sure. You bonds. Betcha. Well, we had, I'll talk more extensively about bonds, but that this rally is likely to continue to early August. <clears throat> and um, stocks, uh, I have a turning point uh, today, and so uh, it is also <clears throat> the end of the end of the month strength period for May going into June. So I think you get a brief pullback today, but I think the uh, I think the uptrend is intact up until next January. But right here, I think you'll get some weakness this week, a pullback, and then weakness in the second half of June. Mm -hmm. So by the end of the month, it might be slightly lower or exactly where we are now. And gold is in a trading range. And I, I think it's low has been 1280, but I'm, I'm lowering it a little bit. I'm saying in a 1260, 1300 trading range, uh, the trends are running against gold right now. The oil cycle, it, uh, it uh, doesn't really top until September. But you get a brief peak right here. We're in it right now. And uh, the big story is uh, the one thing I've been pounding the table about, which I don't think – I read a lot of other material. But it surprises me how many people were bearish on the dollar, and I can't imagine why. Anyway, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through that. And I just came back from Chicago from UAC where I released my latest book, Mastering Geopolitical Prediction, Applied Mundane Astrology. So those are the, the perspectives for today. And so if we go to the next slide, which is number three. Okay. S&P Weekly, you can see um, that peak right around June 4. It's actually June 5, that little dashed line. So number one, we have the end of the month period of strength, which expires today. Number two, a projected turning point, which is the turning points you project out, such as George Lindsay, Gann, or Bob Miner do from prior highs and prior lows. You get that one right here, and, and you also have this cycle peaking. So you have several reasons to look for a few days down here as the week opens. And if we go forward one more, now here we come to the monthly cycle, which suggests a mid-June peak. Now, June usually is weak in the second half, and here you have a dynamic cycle, the week, the monthly cycle, which is the longer version of the weekly one, peaking. So it looks like you know, for uh, someone who's holding a longer-term portfolio, there's really no need to make any changes. For traders, there are opportunities right here in June. So with the period of low volatility is gone. And if we go to the next page, this one I'm – uh, we'll, we'll just look at the, the result first. This is, uh, it looks like Bonds Weekly. But you'll see that downtrend line that has been enforced since September has been broken to the upside. Now, if you mm -hmm. recall the last time I pointed out that the bond cycles were bottoming and that May, June is a, uh, if you look at the histogram, May, June doesn't show much fluctuation, but that's a bit deceptive because in the month of May, there have actually been more highs than any other month, and in the month of June, there have been more lows than any other month. So it's a very volatile period, and from that period forward, usually uh, seasonally, it is it favors bonds. But I still think they're in a bear market. If we go one more slide, now that is a, a close-up of the average performance of notes in the month of June, and you will note that peak that's around uh, June 16th. That period, the 16th to the 23rd, is one of the weakest periods in the entire year. I believe notes are down about 70 or 80 percent of the time. So right now, I expect bonds to – they've been in a, in a, in a slight you – know, they, they zoomed up, hit the 38.2 percent retracement level. They've pulled back a little bit. I'm expecting them to pick up right here and rally into the middle part of the month, and then that period is – 
uh, like the Bermuda Triangle for bonds. So you should see a sharp sell-off right in there. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the, this is the uh, cycle, I think I've shown this on your show several times, uh, that suggested a low around this time. It occurred about a week earlier, two weeks earlier than I thought. That is the monthly cycle. And you will note it goes right up into the first week in August, which is what I said in slide number one. And let's see how this, now this is the dynamic cycle. A dynamic cycle means you hit the button, it extracts the latest price data, and it constructs a cycle on the fly. This next slide, I call these static cycles. This is from 1982 to the present, the expected return for the U.S. 10-year note in any month. So in other words, it's the probability it's going to go up multiplied by the amount it goes up or down. So you will see where we're coming from here. We're coming from March, which is a very weak month, April, May, June. As I said, the histogram doesn't look like much, but there's a great deal of volatility in May, June. And now look at July, look at August, and look at the rest of the year. So bonds are in a bear market, but now at least the seasonality is in their favor. So you should get some recovery. The previous slide shows that the cycle bottomed in, actually that was in May, and you could see the rest of the year. So with the dynamic cycle and the static cycle both pointing up, you have to expect a rally. And now we're getting it. And let's go one more. Now here's, I had picked 118 as the uh, target for this decline. And you can see why that uptrend is really still intact. Wow, that's really a long-term trend too. My God, that goes back into the, the crash that's of 87. Yeah. yeah. So that was the target. I, I couldn't see any other target. And of course, when the 122 low was taken out, it was very clear it was going to go to 118 back in the uh, in April, May, June, or I should say uh, March, April, May. So that is the, if we go to the next slide, now this is the U.S. dollar. That is the monthly cycle. That is just the latest, that's the dynamic cycle, the latest extraction of the U.S. dollar prices and that doesn't top make a serious top until September so mm -hmm. again I talked to a lot of people I was in Abu Dhabi I met with the head of the Abu Dhabi commercial bank and he's going on and on about exogenous factors that affect the dollar and of course I'm sitting there thinking well what are the correlation of these events with the dollar how do you know all this stuff's going to happen and if you talk about things in the US getting worse well comparatively they could be worser in other places like Italy uh, the, the Brexit, which I think is a big deal that people don't see yet, the weak growth in the Eurozone. But I just go, I want people to get a good picture of this. Go to the next one. And you, as you would expect, look at the Euro cycle. I mean, that Hold doesn't turn. Second, yeah. Okay, got it up here. Slide 11. You yeah, would I not, got it. There we go. Now, that's what you would expect if the dollar's bottoming and we have a, we an got advertisement a, coming in yeah we do well can you stay with us bill sure thank you very much Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, uh, we're back and we're talking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, you want to continue on, my friend? Sure. Sure. We were on slide number 11, the Euro cycle, which points straight down. Mm -hmm. And now if we advance to 12, we see the pound cycle. And again, uh, not only not only do you see a sharp decline, you don't see any recovery yeah. until sometime late in the summer. So, you know, oh, what? Dear. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. The problem is what I did was I lost my, there I got them back. Sorry, you know, I'm, okay. I'm not the, the technical thing. Let me get this pound cycle up here and uh, we'll take a quick look at it here. I get the bonds. Sorry for the delay, Bill, but doggone it, I get okay. the euro cycle. Here's our pound cycle, so we're ready to go here, and we'll get it so, up here running. There we go. So dollar cycle up, the pound and euro cycles down, which is what you would expect because they move inversely to each mm -hmm. other. If they didn't, it would be a quandary. But now mm -hmm. the question comes up, with this type of cycle work, cycles work, I want to make the point that you project the cycles out. And then you ask yourself, what kind of fundamental environment would create this, uh, which is the reverse of the way that it's done in industry, which is, I think, one reason for their lack of effectiveness. But number one, rising interest rates. Why would you want dollars? But rising interest rates. Number two, mm -hmm. the uh, economic growth in the eurozone is was already less than the U.S. And now, of course, the U.S. is accelerating because the new administration has taken away a lot of the rules, regulations, and lower taxes. And... Uh, those are obvious. I don't think that gap is going to. I think that gap is going to widen. I don't see Europe doing anything in, in that area. And uh, number three, why do you want your assets to come to the U.S.? I know from living overseas because you think they're safer here. So that implies something's going to happen out in the world. I don't think North Korea is a big threat. It never did, as you may recall from our previous calls. Mm -hmm. But um, the, uh, I do believe. The Iran-Russia situation is in that Russia is assisting Iran in this Iran nuclear deal, which wasn't a deal, it was a giveaway. That is going to get hotter, and I think, as I said before, I think uh, the Trump administration will have more trouble in Afghanistan than they think. And what I had not mentioned, what I was out in Chicago last weekend at the UAC conference, and I did a presentation on Cero cycles, which are eclipse cycles that run about 12, 1300 years. They take a theme and they project it forward. They occur every 18 years, 18, 72 eclipses in a cycle, total 1,262 years. But the cycles coming up in the past all had to do with conflict between England and the continent. In other words, England fighting France, uh, you know, treaties, wars. What is the conflict today? It's uh, leaving, it's Brexit, leaving the EU. So that is not going to make, that's not a stable underpinning for the euro. 
And mm -hmm. uh, now look what's happening with the banks in Italy. So you put all of this together and people have lots of fundamental reasons to flee their currencies and to buy the dollar that I don't think uh, they certainly weren't apparent when the rally started, but I think it will become more apparent as we go forward. No, do you see um, uh, someone's this on the same train of thought here? The, since we're talking about this currency, uh, what's your feeling on Bitcoin? Do you have a feeling on cryptocurrencies? Well, as I said before, I'm not. I haven't really done much. I went and I met with NYU's expert, Professor David Yermak, and we all, they also is a cryptocurrency department forming at the University of Business and Economics in Vienna. And I actually met with now. now I'm sorry to say, the late Matthew Mellon, who. Uh, bankrolled Bitcoin. And what he mm -hmm. said to me, he says, you know, I'm, I'm tired of dealing with these programmers. Besides, the government has gotten in touch with me and they want to create their own cryptocurrency. And I think that is, that's definite. The government is going to create some sort of cryptocurrency and offer you a benefit that you can't get from private industry. And the strongest cryptocurrencies will probably survive, such as uh, Bitcoin and uh, I can't think of the other one. Ethereum. The, uh, Ethereum, the top ones will survive, but like the days of the automobile, we don't have Duesenberg, Studebakers, or any yeah. of those model cars left. So I think it'll be a few big ones. They'll get hit with some rules and restrictions, where the government can impose whatever rules and restrictions they like, and they can offer benefits that these guys can't. So I think the big boys will survive and the little ones will disappear. Okay, that makes pretty good sense. Uh, okay, you want to continue on and move, move sure. on to the next one? Sure. Yeah, this is just... If you want to, uh, I just posted this yesterday, how to trade the FANG stocks in June. That is at Forbes.com, great speculations. Okay. So if you want let to take get, a look let at me it. Get the, yeah, I want to get this uh, link up so that the folks see it. They'll be able to uh, take a quick look at it here. Okay. Now, next one is Amazon, correct? Well, this is what I wrote about. This is not everything, but this is the same cycle extraction. This is for... The month of June, obviously, and mm -hmm. the way this works is I am taking the likelihood or the probability. You see that green buy signal right there? I'm taking the likelihood of that based upon the last 12 months. I could do it for 24 months or 36, and I'm multiplying that times the magnitude. If you look to the right, mm -hmm. the right axis, cycle magnitude, I'm multiplying one by the other. And uh, Amazon comes out ranked more highly than the other FANG stocks. So for this month, Amazon is probably strong. And by the way, June is usually a weak month for technology, but not for Amazon. Mm -hmm. So you've got two reasons. What do you have? You have the seasonal cycle pointing up, the dynamic cycle pointing up. And so I would hold that stock. And the next stock is Google. Now, Google's requires a, it's got a sell signal right here in the middle of the month. So it might be worth a brief short, but I can I, I am almost certain that uh, the we've had two earnings reports. The next two are also going to be bearish, especially the July one. That's due to the horoscope. So the next one is in the middle of July. That's a short. Mm -hmm. So Google, I've advised big fund managers, look, it's going to rally, hit the, hit the bearish earnings report in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. By the end of the year, it'll probably be exactly where it was at the beginning of the year. So if you want to hold it, you can, but you won't make much net progress. Mm -hmm. So now if we move to everybody's favorite, Apple, you have a rally starting right here, running through to about June 13th or 14th. Mm -hmm. And then after well, that, now Apple is weak in the month of June, and in the second half of the month, the cycle turns down, and 66% of the sell signals have been valid. Mm -hmm. Well, these are really interesting charts, Bill. I tell you, you do some fabulous work. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, new book that uh, you've got out? Yeah, it's the next it's the next slide. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. yeah, yep. there you go. Yeah, this is called Mastering Geopolitical Prediction, Applied Mundane Astrology. It's, a, it's for anybody who studies astrology, who decides they want to get into mundane astrology, which is the astrology of politics, countries, cities, leaders, which I've been doing for about 30 years, and it was the reason I got interested 45 years ago. But you have to realize that the previous uh, folks working in this area did not have software or computers. Or the internet and so here I explain how to put together a database what you should include in it how you should lay it out and then how you search through it so for example if there's an eclipse coming up at 20 cancer which there is in July if you zip through my database you'll see it's right on the mm -hmm. Sun 
It equals the sun in the horoscope of Albania. It also brings in Afghanistan, also the Treaty of U.S. Russian diplomatic relations, which I talked about the last time, last couple times on your show. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there are that's uh, to find transits, hit uh, transits and eclipses, two natal charts of leaders and countries. But then there are map techniques, eclipse paths, and here comes the advertisement. Yeah, could you stay with us till uh, we get back from the break and we sure, finish good. up? So that, yeah, thank you very much. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. SAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with Bill Meridian from Cycles Research. Bill, you're going to be talking about your book, so why don't you fire away? Yeah, and the uh, other techniques are map techniques, such as eclipse paths, astrocartography, and uh, then I have a chapter on Mon on uh, Cero cycles, which I mentioned a few minutes ago, and I did that presentation out in Chicago. So when I started doing this, you know, I asked old Charles Jane, I said, Charles, what is the horoscope for France? And he said, well, well, and uh, he was sort of a cross between Copernicus and W.C. Fields. And he said, uh, well, Bill, you, you, there is no one horoscope for a country. You know, it's a process, and, you know, I've come to understand that. And I've tried to take all of this and put it in one book. 
so people know what techniques you should use first, which ones you wait over others, you know, how to prepare a forecast and, mm -hmm. and uh, so on. And the, uh, as I said, I don't think anybody had enough, number, had enough hours or days in their life to get a broad perspective of it because we didn't have computers and software in the old days. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Larry, I just wanted to, in the last few minutes here, I have to tell you, on Friday, I went to the cannabis industry exhibition in Javits Center because a couple of friends of mine run it. So one of my uh, clients down in Abu Dhabi said, Bill, it's going to be a huge business. Go. So I went and I talked to every single vendor. I made sure I, I, uh, I told them I'm an investor. I'm looking at the industry. And I learned all about packaging equipment. Um, let me see packaging, uh, how to extract whatever is in hemp and grass and infuse it into candy, makeup, cream. Um, it, it was, uh, oh, let me see. We had guys there who could detect pests through some device they've invented before <laughs> they even form. And then it goes up to the cloud. It's spectrographic analysis. It determines pests that aren't even uh, just being born. It goes up to the cloud and suggests a remedy. Wow. And, uh, hey, thanks for, thanks for joining us, Bill. We really appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Hey, okay. God bless and take care, take care of your allergies. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!